Now let's just do a breakdown of this compliance curve here. So to understand what kind of curve this is, this is um, a description of this in nuns. So the values in the illustration are static and relate to conditions when, when no gas is flowing. And I think that really gives us a clue that this diagram here is for static compliance. Okay. Yeah, let me just get the pen. This is for static. And then the question that I ask myself is that if it's a static compliance curve, we know what static compliance curve looks like. It looks, as I said, it looks from, uh, sorry, residual volume to total lung capacity, and it looks something like this. But why is it just a straight line here? And then we have to read west. So figure 711, which is the same curve here, so this is similar to the to that shown in 7.3, and 7.3 is a um, is a static compliance curve of a cat. Okay. Except that for clarity, no hysteresis is indicated, and that answers this question here in terms of why it doesn't look like this. They've excluded the hysteresis, and so the next question. I have is, all right, if you've excluded the hysteresis and we know that with a hysteresis graph, there is both a inspiratory and expiratory component, is the curve that you have drawn here, is that inspiration or is that expiration? Got the answer in the description here. So the relaxation pressure volume curve of the lung and chest wall, the subject inspires or expires to a certain volume from the spirometer. And so my, my hypothesis is that these static compliance curves, which don't show hysteresis, it is the average of both the inspiratory and expiratory static compliance. And if anyone can find the original study and send it to me, that would be amazing. But I have tried, and honestly, leading up to the exam, don't spend your time searching for it, okay? I think this is something that you can probably do after your exam if you're interested in doing. I, I've tried um, searching for the original study to actually find out how it was done, but I can't seem to find it. And I think this was done almost, uh, about over 60 or 70 years ago, all right? But it get, it, the, the thing is, it's such a key diagram, it just keeps on being, um, you know, keeps on being reproduced over and over and over again. And I think it actually confuses a lot of candidates. And the aim of this diagram is not really to show compliance and hysteresis, it's really to show the relationship between lung and chest wall and how total respiratory lung compliance is a combination of those two respiratory um, of those two factors, lung and chest wall. It's less to do with hysteresis and more to do just with that relationship. When we talk about total respiratory lung compliance, it's not just lung, it's chest wall as well. The next one here is the one from Byrne and Levy. So a couple of things here. The key concepts are that a static compliance curve is drawn from residual volume to total lung capacity. And with a dynamic compliance curve, it's often drawn from FRC okay, to tidal volume. All right, so this is static and this is off the lung. Now you're gonna ask me, how do I know? All right. So one, remember what I said, look at the, look at the y-axis. So we've got volume percentage to TLC. So already I know that this, this is a static, looking at the y-axis, okay? The second thing I do is that this is normal tidal respiration, just here, All right? The FRC 
is starting above zero. Okay. And because it's starting above zero, uh, that means that this is a lung compliance. And the combination is that this, the red box here is static, and this blue box inside here represents dynamic. And the other thing, and this, and hopefully this will blow your mind, that I, and this was what I was working on all last night. I have superimposed the two images. So the line from here to here represents dynamic compliance. And remember what I said, the, the way that you get static compliance is that you have an inspiratory pause. And what happens is that that moves across here, okay? So in other words, dynamic compliance is the change in is the change in volume, which is here, divided by the change in pressure, and the change in pressure is from here to here. And static compliance would be the change in volume, which is again it's, it's here, and the change in pressure is from here to here. Right. So as you can see, static compliance is always greater than dynamic compliance. And I, and I hope that makes sense. And when we look at this curve here, when we talk about dynamic compliance, what happens is that the curve would actually look something like this initially, and then you have your inspiratory pause to get back to static, and then after that, come down here like that. So that static compliance is from here to here, and dynamic compliance is from here to here. For a volume change um, divided by the given change in pressure, you can see that static compliance has a higher compliance than dynamic compliance because we are excluding a waste resistance. And yesterday we talked about uh, this curve here and how this was for, was for the total respiratory system and how elastic work was a triangle. What we did was we said, that the breathing curve looks like this. But what I want to build on today is in terms of the concept is that when we look at dynamic compliance, it looks something like this, okay? And then after that, with the inspiratory pause, your pressure drops, but your volume stays the same. And so the curve will look something like this. So dynamic compliance is from here to here, points of no flow, and static compliance with the inspiratory pause is from here to here. Thank <laughs> you.